Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to chime in with some tricks or tips on how to apply the evaluation uh, skills we talked about in class over the last couple of days. So what I've done is I've found some uh, different web pages we're going to walk through here and try to illustrate some of the concepts. So one of the things that every class said was the URL, the domain name is important. And everybody said edu. If we got edu, we're good to go. We talked a little bit about how .coms were still good, but we just had to back it up. Uh, what we didn't talk about was sometimes edu might not be as reputable as we want. So what we've got here is a, this is New York University, and this is a professor there, Sinan Aral, and you can see this part of the URL, the tilde Saral. So anytime you see a tilde, that is very commonly um, used to indicate like this is a personal site of this guy. So now it's not necessarily New York University that's speaking, it's this professor individually. Um, sometimes you see this on businesses, it is very common on university sites, not as common on government sites, but you need to watch out. Um, this is a place now, so this professor is you know, this is essentially his resume, but it could also be his ranting blog, and it might not be uh, as valuable content as, say, his actually published research. So you need to be careful. In this instance, this is actually a really good website. Uh, it looks like he's got, you know, his published research here, and we can gain access to it. Sometimes you get these with the tilde, and it's just an instructor going off on something. So got to be careful about that. Up next, uh, I did a similar search to you guys. So my, uh, you know, one of my desired career paths, I want to be a CIO for a higher education institution. So I did some quick Google searches and I wanted to kind of check these resources out. I mean, this is higher ed CIO studies. It's a .org. It's my number one Google search result. And, um, if you're not familiar with, I want to introduce you to a site called Alexa.com, E-A-L-E-X-A.com. And Alexa uh, has a ton of statistics and analytics on almost every website out there. So what you can do is you can put in the, uh, let me copy this. So this is what the homepage looks like. You can just go to Alexa. You can either do a, a search like you would at Google or you can put the full URL in and search it and it will find um, information. So in this instance it says that the Alexa rank of this website is 16.1 millionth. Sites linking in 8. Um, doesn't give me a lot of data. So that's kind of, okay, I'm not sure how I feel about that. If I come back to my Google search results, I see, uh, you know, a Wikipedia article, educause.edu, so that's interesting, it's a .edu. Um, a couple further down we've got this, this is chronicle.com, so maybe that's what I'm looking for. Type in the chronicle.com and I found, oh this is now 8,000. Uh, in the US it's 2,800, so this is the entire web, there's billions of websites out there. This, we're actually getting pretty high up. And what I want to illustrate is the sites linking in. Something we didn't really talk about um, in regards to evaluation. Um, is connectedness, right? So the World Wide Web, all websites are interconnected and the more interconnected they are, it helps them on Google, but it also in some regards kind of makes them more reputable. If you can see here, there are 20, over 21,000 other sites that link to chronicle.com. Over 21,000 sites say, well, this is worthy enough of me putting on my website so that gives it a lot of credibility. Uh, this is a really handy tool to just kind of quickly check out. You can see there's some interesting uh, examples here of what's linking to it. But um, and if I come in and click get details, you can sometimes even get more information. Some of the stats you have to pay for, um, but some stuff is free. You can find some interesting information about different websites and it's a great way uh, to do um, what I call triangulating, um, trying to just get from various sources to make sure that this is a good website. So 
Alexa.com very handy. Another tool, so one of the websites I'm having you read about controversy on Wikipedia. It's a it's a blog. So WordPress.com, here's the link. Um, I don't think I can accurately even pronounce this guy's name, Taha Yasiri. WordPress.com. It's fairly recent, came out in May, so we, we like that. But it is a blog, so how do I know if it's reputable? Um, and we talked about separating the author's background from the website's background. And what's very handy, again, working on connectedness, let's just do a search for this author. Okay, this is an obscure author I had never heard of before uh, a few weeks ago when I was doing research for this. Uh, we find out you know, quickly what he's into. He works at Oxford. Okay, that's instantly uh, plus one. Um, I could follow him on Twitter or get information upon his um, online persona. Uh, but, then, you know, I also get some some good results here. So scholar.google.com, he's got information on Scholar. That means it's actually some published research. The content I'm having you read is actually part of a book he's writing to be published. It's a chapter out of a book. So it is reputable content, but sometimes we fall on these blogs. We don't know how reputable this author is. A quick Google search can tell you some interesting things. And sometimes authors, um, even if they're moderately famous in their particular genre or industry, will have a Wikipedia page about them that will give you all kinds of information and then resources to link back out. Again, triangulation, trying to verify your point from you know, two, three other sources is going to really uh, go a long way as far as making sure that you have factual information. Up next, um, Dan Ream came and talked last week about this resource, Factiva. Get to it from the library. And I asked some of you if you noticed at the very bottom that Factiva was owned by Dow Jones. Something we talked about as one of our criteria is who's paying for this, right? Who sponsored this ad? Who sponsored this content? Uh, sometimes um, people are very upfront about it. You know, if I'm an investor in this company, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest about it so that you know that I do have other interests besides purely objective ones. Uh, and that's very beneficial. It doesn't always happen that way. So I got interested in why Dow Jones owns Factiva. And uh, so you can do some quick Google searches, find some stuff. Uh, what I found out, uh, you know, you can go look at the Dow Jones Factiva website and it's a sales pitch. It doesn't really give you that much information. Cool videos. But the uh, Wikipedia page, which was another couple links down on my Google search results. Uh, you know, I read through that for a little bit started reading the history of it and found out in 2007 oh that's right Dow Jones was sold to News Corp so if I actually go look at this is the again this is the Dow Jones website so I've been doing a lot of different research here I can see the kind of things that are in Factiva which we talked about last week if I verify this okay I go to Dow Jones dot com Dow Jones is a News Corp company okay well, let's go learn about News Corp. Well, here are some of the properties that News Corp owns. So all of a sudden it makes sense. The company that owns all of these newspapers easily has uh, the ability to create a database of all of their own properties. Now, if we did further research, we might find out, well, are there other properties besides News Corp owned newspapers? In Factiva, we could dig a little deeper to find uh, make sure that we're getting the whole story and not just the News Corp story. Depending on our information need, we might need to go to that level of research to verify that the source we're using is actually objective. So just some tricks. Uh, hopefully you found this useful and you can put it to good use. While contemplating the end of my last recording, I decided it would probably be a good idea to verify whether or not there are non 
News Corp entities uh, in the Factiva database. And so upon a little research, found out the answer is yes. Uh, one example would be the New York Times. New York Times is a newspaper not owned by News Corp. How do I verify that? Uh, something that's very common, right? We can do a simple Google search, New York Times News Corp. And what happens is, pull up our good friend Wikipedia. I did this for several papers uh, in this list. Factiva has a list of sources, and I just started going through. Okay, Google search this newspaper, News Corp. Find a web page. What do we do? You do something called a, a, a find. So you can edit and find or hit the command or control F and it'll search this web page that you're currently on for whatever text so I would search for a newspaper find News Corp if News Corp is on this web page it's probably going to be a statement like this newspaper was bought by News Corp in 2008 or this newspaper is a news corporation property and um, generally that saves you a lot of time, makes things easy. But you can't blindly um, rely on find. This is a perfect example. So I did that on this page. New York Times, all of a sudden, what's going on here? Dual class shares, structure controlled by, bought by News Corp in 2007. What? I didn't know the New York Times was bought by News Corp in 2007. Well, it wasn't. Um, this is one of the arguments against Wikipedia. In my opinion, this particular section of this um, article is really out of place. It's not well written. Uh, we're talking about ownership, how the Times is owned, which is in this kind of model, a dual class share model. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they just say, oh, by the way, this is the way the journal worked too. The Wall Street Journal was owned by the Graham family before it was bought by News Corp in 2007. You have to very carefully read that paragraph to understand, okay, now we've, we've made a leap. We're not talking about the times anymore. And if you were simply scanning this, as many of us do when we're on Wikipedia, boom, uh, this could get you in a lot of trouble. So pay very attention to the content and make sure that you not only use Wikipedia as your resource. What have you got to do? You got to go that step further triangulate it against some other uh, research.